There is arguably a single principle that is going to keep you poor and prevent you from building wealth, unless you change it, of course. And it's the same principle, albeit in reverse, that the banks use to build their wealth, literally banking on you staying poor by giving them your money. I'm talking, of course, about high interest rates on various cards. These are the single biggest thing that are going to keep you poor and prevent you building wealth. Whether it's a credit card with a high interest rate or whether it's a car loan with a high interest rate, these are the things that you really need to look at and tackle first, which I'll come back to with a solution in a moment. But taking this one as an example, they continually bombard me with offers for different cards at various rates. I don't know if this is the rate that most people get or this is a blanket email, but I know that I have a very good credit report because I actually don't have any borrowings and so I, they must see me as reliable and uh, credit worthy because they keep offering me different cards. Now, although it's shown as an interest free for 2024, they bank literally on people not being able to pay it off within that interest-free period and then you end up on their variable rates, which as this one representative rate shown here is 29.9%. Now there are some very useful calculators online that you can go to. For example, this one, it's set in dollars, but obviously you can just imagine it as pounds as well. If you spent, say, £1,800 for a single item, at the interest rate of 29.9 and you paid 65 a month, bearing in mind that the minimum calculated by this calculator is 62.85 and over 48 months, the total true cost is over 3,000. So what started at under two is over 3,000. And of course, you can play with these numbers, but these numbers are real and these numbers compound. So if you had purchases of, let's say, three and a half, these figures then change. You have to change the minimum payment according to this calculator, but you change that. The true purchase of three and a half thousand is 5,300. These numbers compound and compound. If many people have, let's say, seven and a half thousand in credit cards, this now says that the, the minimum per month has got to be 261 something a month. So let's change that to 262. The true cost of 7,500 is now over 13,000. You get the idea. These numbers spiral out of control and they literally bank on people not being able to pay off the amount borrowed within the interest free period. So, how do you go about sorting this out and getting back on track? Now, we are the 17th of January. I didn't pounce on you in the first week of new year this year, but this can be the year that you can turn things around. This can be the year that you start building wealth and getting rid of this debt. And the first place to do that, just as though if you are looking to lose weight, you'll jump on the scales. If you're looking to get fit, you'll take a fitness test. Um, you take a finance health check and you go on to something like this spreadsheet, which is uh, one that we use on a daily basis. I have got this now up on my website, blackbeltbarrister.com. It's slash pages slash downloads, I think, but I'll link it in the description below. You do have to sign up so that you can access it and download it. Um, it's free to sign up, by the way. There, there is a paid option for my exclusive content on there, but I'm not pushing that on you. Um, many people are kind enough to support me and subscribe to that. That's fine. But you get this spreadsheet for free on there. What do you do with this? Well, there's three things you do with this. First of all, you put in here all of your expenses line by line, category by category. And it will tell you as a percentage what percentage these categories represent taken from your income, etc., and so the purpose of this, as I've gone through in great detail in another video, which I'll link in the description below, is to give you an idea, give you a blueprint of where your money is coming in from and where it is going. If you've got a side hustle, seriously, um, a side hustle could be anything from you making entertaining TikToks. Um, if, if you join the creativity program, you, as long as you make videos that are one minute or longer, uh, you, and you've got a certain amount of followers, etc. You can start earning reasonable money on the side of whatever it is you're doing. And that can be hundreds of pounds a month. 
could be thousands of pounds a month, it could be hundreds of pounds a day, depending on how many you make and how many views you get. So you add up all of your income in this column here. You list line by line, you need to go through your bank statement, your credit cards, and you need to be completely brutally honest and write out in each of these columns what you spend on a month by month basis. Now, some, some of you will notice that this doesn't show month by month. This is a month. So we will duplicate this sheet month in, month out, and so that it will show us exactly what we spend. And, and, and we do that to this day. And unless you do that, it doesn't give you a clear picture of really where you are. So you need to start from somewhere. And so once you do this, you get a very transparent picture of where your money is going and percentages. And so you work out, do you really want to be spending, let's say if you put in all of your, let's say that you're spending, you know, 300 pounds on takeaways and 400 pounds on restaurants, suddenly over 20% of your income is going on this entertainment category. Now, yes, of course, you need some kind of entertainment, you need some kind of enjoyment, but how much of it really do you spend, you know, another 200 pounds on wine? We don't drink anymore. We decided that we didn't really need it. Um, we stopped enjoying it. We were spending quite a lot of money on it because we started buying better wines to try to enjoy it more. And so this wine category for us went up. We didn't really go to restaurants and takeaways. We cook our own food. But this wine probably did start to go upwards of these sort of figures, which is, when you look at it, a bit silly, really. Um, so we decided to just cut it out altogether. We feel fitter and healthier for it. And of course, we've saved, uh, I can honestly tell you, we've saved about conservatively about one and a half thousand pounds since we stopped drinking. More about that in another video, perhaps. You might find that story over on Black Belt Secrets. If you're not familiar with that channel, um, that will be linked in the description below as well. So you take all of these, you put all of these in, and then you've got two different strategies to eliminate debt. Um, you've got one debt strategy here, uh, which is to tackle the smallest debt first. The alternative, as I've discussed in another video, is tackling the highest interest rate first. We move over to the uh, right-hand side here, the highest interest rate. So credit card here shows an, as an example of 28%. But let's move back to strategy one first. There is a reason with starting with the smallest debt first, because this will give you a psychological win. Let's say you've got four credit cards and one of them has got 200 pounds on it. You'll pay off the smallest debt first. So this will be money going towards a debt. And so this is a percentage of your money that's going towards your debts. Once you pay off the smallest debt, you've got a psychological win. And if you want to clear your debts completely, each one of these you do pushes you along that track. And then you're on your way to clearing your debts. And once you've cleared your debts, you are really truly on the way to building wealth. Because then the compounding income will be in your favor instead of in the bank's favor with the compounding interest against those purchases. You remember from that sheet we looked at a moment ago. So you're starting with the smallest debt, then the second smallest and so on. And you build up until, of course, your mortgage, which in one sense, you don't necessarily need to look at as a debt in this sense, but um, it is obviously a debt, but be because it's probably, it's your primary uh, residence, it is a different type of debt. We'll talk about that in another video. But in terms of these debts, we're talking about the smallest credit card or the smallest retail purchase. Get them off and pay them off, even if, now this might be, this might sound counterintuitive, even if they are on 0% interest, but you're making payments towards them, you will feel that psychological win even if you pay it off, even if technically you'll lose money because you're paying off a zero interest repayment schedule. But psychologically, you will have a win from getting rid of that debt. And then the next one and the next one. The second strategy takes a little bit more commitment and dedication and you really have to uh, stay true to the path is tackling the highest interest rate first, which might not be the smallest debt, but the highest interest rate for the reasons explained, which should be obvious, which we've gone into in that previous sheet, the highest interest rate is going to hit you the hardest. It's going to compound and compound. Interest will compound on interest. As you saw with the interest rates of 
a purchase or a balance of seven and a half is going to compound the true purchase price of this seven and a half thousand, assuming you make all the payments and pay it off, is over 13,000. So tackling the highest interest rate first, again, is another strategy, but it is one that takes a lot of commitment to do. Um, this is what some people will do when they, they are really serious about getting rid of their debts and then starting to build wealth. Of course, these sheets take into account unexpected repairs and all sorts of other things and uh, transportation costs. You can play with these figures to see where you might be able to save money and reduce the percentages. Um, but this sheet, as I say, will be available linked in the description below. And this video really is to highlight your, your awareness to the high interest rate credit cards and car loans and retail finance that will really sting you and compound the interest and prevent you building wealth because they prevent you getting on that pathway to building wealth because if you're forever tackling debt and fighting debt, then you're never really truly going to start to build wealth. But in order to start to tackle that debt, you need to put everything down in a spreadsheet so you can see everything plain as day and it might trigger something for you to say, right, we're going to stop eating at restaurants, we're going to stop the takeaways, we're going to stop drinking because that can save you money. Um, we saved, like I say, about one and a half thousand pounds um, probably over a, a few months since we stopped drinking. I'd have to look at the spreadsheet, which we also have. We have a spreadsheet for how long it's been and how much on average we think we've saved by not drinking. And so you can do the same. You can put these things down, measure them. I recently, uh, after recovering from an injury, I started training again. I've tracked how long I've trained for, how many kilometers I've done on the cross trainers behind me, uh, and how many calories I've burnt. And I see that graph tick up. The more training I do, the more calories I burn, the longer I train, the, the greater distance I cover. But you see it, it's a psychological win. You see it on a spreadsheet. Otherwise, it's just, you know, you do it when you can, you, you do what you think is best, and you lose track, and ultimately, it, it's not really going to get you anywhere. So the first step, as obvious as it sounds, and I'm not being condescending, uh, I'm here to encourage and to push you to achieve what you want to achieve. Everyone has a different goal. Whatever your goal is, however much money you make, typically, the more someone makes, the more they spend. So they are often the most guilty parties here. If these, if this wage column over here is significantly more, if if this wage column was, you know, 15,000 per month, I can near enough guarantee that most people are doing that have got significant sums of money over here and the percentages are broadly the same, if not worse, if not spending a much higher percentage on entertainment uh, in, in those categories out of their wages. And so they are often worse culprits than those making far less. And because it's a percentages and a numbers game, ultimately, if you're trying to build wealth, you need to put these figures down in a spreadsheet so you can keep track of them. You need to tackle your debts. You need to eliminate those debts so that your money is working for you to build wealth and not build the wealth of the banks. Like I say, I am not being condescending in this video and I know all this is obvious, but uh, hopefully this spreadsheet will be useful to you. You can put these figures down and help you to build wealth. That is what I'm here for on this channel, Daniel Shansmith. So please do subscribe. And there are many more topics to come and real life examples of how you can build wealth. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe. I'll see you next time.